Several steps are involved in completing a CFD simulation. The first step is mesh generation, of which there are several sub-steps. First, we need to determine the control volume that is to be simulated. The control volume involves several surfaces which we need to generate. From these surfaces, we can create a volume mesh if we want to do a 3D simulation, which is mostly the case. Then we can export the volume mesh and check the validity of the volume mesh and use it in simulation. To demonstrate the sub-steps of mesh generation, we are going to use an impactor process as an example. This impactor process has been described by the, in the paper by Marple and Willicke. The reference is shown below. This is a schematic of the impactor. This is the impactor nozzle and this is the impaction plate. This is a cross-sectional view. Two critical dimensions of this structure is the width or the diameter of the nozzle and the distance from the nozzle exit to the impaction plate. From the real impactor structure, we can abstract a control volume that represents the geometry and the dimensions. This is the nozzle of the impactor. This is the impaction plate and it also has the base plate on which the nozzle will be uh, mounted. The flow comes in from the inlet of the nozzle and uh, flows outwards after impacting the impaction plate. So we have an outlet surface that's cylindrical due to the circular shape of the impactor. We also have several solid surfaces, the base plate, the impaction plate, and the surfaces of the nozzle itself. This is the set of the dimensions that we have decided for the impactor nozzle. Due to the relative uh, complexity of the nozzle surfaces, we chose to use uh, the program SOLIDWORKS to uh, generate the volume, to generate the surfaces of the nozzle. Then we will continue to generate additional surfaces using Star CCM Plus and complete the volume ge mesh generation process. Now we generate a volume mesh. To do this, we need to open a new simulation file first. We choose to use the parallel mode, and based on the hardware of my computer, I, used, I choose to use eight parallel processes. Now we need to import the surface file for the impactor nozzle that has been generated uh, previously. We choose to create a new part and we select the right uh, units. After importing, a geometry scene is created for the new part the nozzle. We turn it around and take a measurement to make sure that the dimensions are correct. The inner diameter should be 4.26 millimeters and it is correct. Now we need additional surfaces to complete the volume mesh generation. We are going to create a new cylinder. The dimensions of the cylinder needs to be calculated so that uh, the final results will give us the right dimensions and the positions of uh, the volume mesh. Okay, now we can see there are two parts in a parts node. The cylinder was generated within the Star CCM Plus program. Now if we want to see both parts in the geometry scene, we can go to the geometry scene node and uh, change the parts setting to include the cylinder. Okay, 
now we can see the majority of the nozzle is within the, the big cylinder only a part of it is sticking out and we'll see this situation will change after we generated the volume mesh to generate the volume mesh we select these two parts from the geometry node and then right click set region we're going to generate a new region and uh, in this we choose to create one boundary per part surface and one feature curve per part curve now a new region appeared under the regions node now we need to uh, uh, introduce a mesh into the continuum mode right click new mesh continuum we need to select the uh, models for the meshing process we use the uh, surface remesher surface wrapper and polyhedral measure. We also need to specify some reference values. The base size, we're going to use the size of the inner diameter of the nozzle. We need to specify the surface create, uh, curvature. 100 means there will be 100 cells maximum for a circle. Surface growth rate that's the growth rate of the cells from the smallest to the largest surface proximity this is the size that uh, the meshing process will be considered to be zero we also need to specify surface size the relative minimum size we make it 2.5 percent of the base size the relative target size we make it 25% of the base size and that's it we click initializing initialize meshing and uh, generate surface mesh then we generate volume mesh this will take a few minutes but this is a very simple problem and uh, I have a relatively powerful computer this should be done within a matter of uh, minutes and after which we can save the files so that we don't lose our data when the volume generation uh, volume mesh generation is done a new node called volume mesh will show up under the representation node and now we can see it we can also create a new scene a geometry scene now this geometry scene is the shows the um, the result of the volume mesh it no longer shows the parts that we use to generate the mesh now you can see this is the uh, the cylinder that we generated within star CCM plus this is the nozzle actually part of the nozzle that we imported that was that had been generated uh, using SOLIDWORKS now of the nozzle the part that was initially sticking out of the large cylinder now disappeared this is due to the uh, probably the surface remesher function now we save the file okay for the volume mesh to be used uh, for a simulation process my preference is to export export the volume mesh So that uh, we can use the uh, volume mesh file later uh, from a different simulation. Now this completes the volume generation, the mesh generation process.
Now we carry out post-processing for the volume mesh that we just generated. I'll explain why and uh, how to do this. First, we still need to uh, open a new simulation. And then we're going to import the volume mesh. This is the volume mesh that we generated. After importing, we have a ge geometry scene generated for this volume mesh. Let's take a look. OK, now this entire big cylinder is one surface. The entire nozzle is another surface. What we want to do is we want to separate the big cylinder into several surfaces so we can carry out our simulation properly. As you can see, the side of the cylinder, big cylinder, should be one surface, one boundary. That's the outlet of the flow. The bottom of the cylinder should be another surface, another boundary. And the, the top surface of the big cylinder should be another, have another boundary condition. To separate the cylinder into several surfaces, we right click and uh, split by angle. I use angle of 60 degrees. Apply. Now you see several new surfaces are generated. This is the side surface of the big cylinder. We call it the outlet. This is the inlet to this whole control volume. That's the inlet of the nozzle. And we call it the inlet. This is the impaction plate. So we name it accordingly. This is the base plate upon which the nozzle was supposed to be uh, manufactured. OK, then we also need to uh, assign proper boundary conditions for these uh, uh, surfaces. This is the outlet, so we give it flow split outlet. And the inlet, we make it into velocity inlet. The impaction plate, the base plate, and the impactor nozzle are all wall type boundaries. So we leave it um, unchanged.